which is enlightenment, which is spiritual fulfillment, illumination. This comes straight out of um, African civilization. Um, all African learning involves that, okay? So that this was a group of people who took the, the, um, the Christian mythology and used the mode of the mysteries. And they would come together in groups and, and talk and try to develop themselves spiritually and so forth. Now, there were problems with that. Because given a spiritual conception of the universe, which they had, mm -hmm. okay, they said that the importance of the myth about Jesus was that it pointed to the ability of all human beings to be reborn spiritually. And that it was a symbol of that rebirth. That was an important point. Another important uh, point about their organization was um, they didn't believe in hierarchy. They would come together in groups. It's almost like you have a study group now. Mm -hmm. And you learn from each other. No bosses. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was an important uh, point. Another point we could make is that uh, the female principal or women had a, 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 a more important part to play mm -hmm. in uh, in their group, okay? Now, but institutionalized religion had an ideological role to play, okay? A political role to play in the formulation and the solidification of the European empire, okay? Mm -hmm. In order to fulfill the Asili, which is seeking power. Constantine sees this. Others see this. What would help that to happen is to have an institution, the church, which has a hierarchy, um, which has a chain of command. Okay, that's one thing. So keep that in mind. So the Gnostics are a threat to that because they say, no, we don't recognize any hierarchy. Very importantly. Now this is a, this is a, this fascinates me, this point, but, but you just got to follow me along, okay? Uh -huh. okay? We're we'll following you on this one. All right. <laughs> there is what we call the apostolic church, the apostles. Uh -huh. What they say, and this is a, what most Christians would say, is that the resurrection of Jesus was an actual, I don't think actual is a good word here, physical occurrence and historical occurrence. Now, the question is, why do they put so much emphasis on that? Okay? The Gnostics said that that whole concept was to be understood symbolically, again, as pointing to the idea of how you could resurrect the spirit. And so it was a spiritual concept, okay? Now, we know that we had had concepts of resurrection long before mm -hmm. the Jesus story, mm -hmm. right? right? So that the, the meaning of that has to do with uh, the regeneration of life, okay? And with illumination and coming to know self and so forth. It's a very deep concept. The apostolic uh, Christian church said that it had only to be understood as an historical, physical occurrence that took place just like you and I are sitting here. The resurrection. Yes, that it did not, it was not to be understood spiritually or symbolically. Why? Why did they put so much emphasis on that? Because then what they said was, this took place at a, at a particular point in time, particular place, and there were people who saw it. Why are they so important? Because those people can then say, well, Jesus said to me, do this, build this, okay? Mm -hmm. Upon this rock and so forth. And 
those people who actually witnessed this, this physical occurrence, then pass on authority, which they have gotten directly from by, this person. By being in the presence. By being in that presence. Mm -hmm. They pass it on. Then that group passes it on. That is the concept of the apostolic church. What are you passing on? You're passing on authority. You're passing on the sanction to be able to say, we control this and we can tell you what is right and what is wrong and so forth and what to do and how it should work. So that papal authority to this day in the Catholic Church, in the Catholic Church mm -hmm. is based on that foundation of being able to say that this is something that occurred at a specific time in a specific place and there were these people who saw it and they then had the authority to then give us the authority. So you see how organization is involved, ideology is involved, and that it had to serve a particular uh, purpose of political achieving, purpose, a yeah. political purpose of achieving mm -hmm. power. The Gnostics would get in the way of that. And there were other heretics, they called them heretics also, who were giving different interpretations of the teachings that didn't fit mm -hmm. the objective of gaining power. The Gnostics were saying, no, that's not the important thing. Everybody can experience uh, this rebirth and this, re this resurrection. And everybody can become spiritually illuminated. But it takes work, and it takes spiritual work. Now to the Judeo-Christian split, which is um, okay. just as interesting. Yeah, I enjoy talking about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the background that... that, that, that uh, that I'm assuming that people would know because uh -huh. I just I don't have time to go okay. through all of that is the extent to which Judaism embodied the the um, values and principles that we're talking about they're a part of European culture okay very very uh, the the monotheism the um, uh, the written codification okay um, also patriarchy by the way but that's another issue uh -huh. um, so then you have the Christian formulation, which comes directly out of that, right? So then the question, I, I remember I was young and always raised in my mind, well, why then this antagonism? Why the need to say, you know, that one was wrong and one was right and we're not them and so forth, when they're really, you know, the same thing? The answer is always political and in terms of power when you're talking about European culture. And that's what the concept of the Sili helps us to mm -hmm. do. Always look for what are the political implications? What are the implications for the development of European culture? Look at the power trail. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's mm -hmm. a trail. Mm -hmm. um, what Judaism did was to say to its people, which was a small group of people, you are a special people. You have been put here to, um, to be a model. And through your actions, others will, they will learn and they will see that. But still, they're not going to be you. They aren't going to be the chosen people. They aren't going to be the special people ever. You have been put here for that special reason. Okay? Um, what Paul begins to do is something else. That statement, that the, the statement that the Jewish people are making within that religious context is not one that can be used for expansion. They aren't seeking converts. You see? Mm -hmm. They're saying, we're special. And we're, we're, we're an elite, whatever we are, and we're content to remain that way. We know we're superior. We don't want to convert anybody. We don't want to convert anybody uh -huh. because you can't be us. Mm -hmm. But the European, how should I put it, ego, self-image is expanding. It's got to grow because they're talking about world domination. They want to conquer people. How can they use the religion to conquer people and at the same time say you can't be in this? They couldn't do that. So what changes is the whole definition of the Gentiles, 
and that they could also be saved. So that Paul can then preach, people can then preach, if you come into this thing, we can then save you. Well then now, so what do you gain by that? You gain the same way that the Romans were able to go around the world and say, look, we'll make you a Roman citizen. And then by that, you become civilized. And still, they maintain power. Okay? This uses the religion to say, become a Christian. You will be saved. But it's like being saved in their image. Mm -hmm. Because still, it's Europeans in control. Europeans in dominance. The Jewish statement was too um, contained, okay, too tribalistic in a sense, to allow for that. Um, and it's a question of rhetoric as well. What has worked so well in European Christianity to colonize uh, all of us is the rhetoric of saying we love you and we have this gift to share with you and we're doing this for you you know the whole brotherhood mm -hmm. rhetoric that is only rhetoric that is meant for those who uh would be victims of the colonial thrust of the imperialistic thrust okay that rhetoric was not in the jewish statement it didn't say in fact, you need to look at Deuteronomy, you need to look at the Old Testament, it's very clear. It's saying, you do whatever you have to do to those other people who believe in those other gods. Kill them, their children, the babies. Now, this is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't know to what extent people, you know, have carefully read mm -hmm. that, but look in Deuteronomy. It is very clear. It's a very uh, uh, aggressive uh, uh, statement in the sense of, it's really defensive, saying protect yourself against those false gods and kill anybody that you have to mm -hmm. who is trying to get you to believe in any other god. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it did not, it's not about them trying to go throughout the world and convert um, other people. The, the conversion